Hi everyone. Uh, if you could please tell me in the chat if you can hear me alright, we can start again. Uh, I want to do one more hour of uh, painting. Okay, so here's my desktop again and I'm on the camera and you can also see my hands uh, so you can see more or less what I'm doing and um, I want to do uh, one more hour of uh, painting this uh, which is actually a commissioned illustration uh, for the uh, clip studio Uh, so they can use it in their um, co commercial materials, promotional materials, and uh, they commissioned me to do this. Uh, if you hear any disturbance uh, on my left or behind me, it's probably um, our new dog doing, doing something um, really bad to some of her toys or something that she has there. So, um, okay. Okay. Uh, so in the last three hours we did this building here, so the, the second building uh, here in the back. And um, I think this is a bit um, too blue, so I'll uh, turn down the blue layer that I uh, put on everything. Um, I don't think it's needed so much, so let's delete it. <laughs> what the? Okay. And let's try to do the building in the back so I can just have everything done here. By the way, if you have any questions um, about the thing that I'm doing and or just like general questions about stuff, uh, feel free to ask in the chat. I have your chat here on my iPad so I can see uh, your questions. Okay, let's turn down the lighting layers for a second and um, I'll um, let's just paint some random like windows and stuff on this so um, we will have something here okay there's actually a storm outside um, in Tokyo with um, lightning and stuff so um, I hope um, everything will be okay for the next hour or something um, okay I'll lock this layer and I have just one of my own pictures here, um, so I can pick some colors from it. Ah, uh, yes, there was a stream er earlier today. I was doing this same picture uh, for three hours or something. So I just want to spend one more hour. Uh, we went outside to buy some food and came back just before the storm happened so we were lucky and um, uh, I want to put more one more layer in uh, one more layer one more layer yes but one more hour in into this Yes, I would like to do some brushes for uh, Clip Studio Paint. Some of the brushes that I made for Photoshop worked actually okay-ish because you can import the, the brushes here, uh, but a lot of them didn't. So um, I have to kind of remake them and uh, re, uh, redo all the settings and everything to for them to work okay. Um, for now, I'm using just regular brushes that I just found somewhere. So these are just some brushes that I found on the in the free library of, of, of Clip Studio brushes. Um, the main ones that I'm using here are, are called uh, Thick Paint. 
which I found okay after some modifications but I would like to do my own uh, set so uh, I can share it with you again but uh, as you know probably I use quite simple brushes nothing fancy so um, even the like free brushes that someone made that you can download uh, from the Clip Studio library for free are enough to do this kind of painting so hello everyone yes I'm going to crop it on the edges um, there is actually a, a frame so um, but it's uh, a bit more mm, uh, how do you call it um, satisfying for me to just paint it like this I don't feel kind of constrained so much I'll add a layer behind this so I can put some things on top of the roof like here So yeah, I'm using the Clip Studio Paint on an M1 Mac and um, as you know, uh, it's a completely new architecture, so um, some applications don't work or work slower or something like that. Uh, with Photoshop, still from what I know, um, there's like the beta version, I have it installed and it works okay-ish. Um, there are some problems still with it, not big ones but um, nothing that uh, kind of prevents you doing work but some are kind of bothersome for example uh, if you turn off your computer like uh, turn it into sleep mode and then come back the next day the all the pictures are black uh, so you have to kind of re resave them and reopen them which can be bothersome if you don't know which one you want actually save then which one no um, it doesn't ruin the data inside of the picture, but it uh, kind of ruins the, I don't know, like picture window. Uh, so it's like a one bug um, that uh, I discovered and that's basically it. But the M1 uh, beta version is really, really faster than the standard version of Photoshop on the M1 Mac. It's, it's I think, like three times faster probably. So it's really um, better to install the beta version and use it because I have been using it for what, like two, three months and from uh, when I bought the computer and it works okay. -ish. Uh, but Clip Studio uh, from what I looked is just uh, a native application. It has both the old Intel and the new M1 version inside. So it's the... Um, what do you call it? Not unique, um, universal version. So it's it has the code for the new processor already in it. So it's not like a beta or something. It's just like a re release version. And um, I didn't have any problems with it so far, especially anything related uh, from uh, to the to the Mac. Uh, but the, the performance, it's kind of hard to judge uh, because I have not used it on the Intel Mac. I would have to like install it also on the Intel Mac and, and, and try it, but um, it, it works really fast. It's kind of comparable with the Photoshop uh, beta version. I, um, th this is probably the largest file that I used for in, in this and I'm working here while streaming and this is still recording the um uh, time lapse uh, video also for me so um i don't think it's 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 good i think i didn't experience any lag or any uh, kind of slowdown or like problems from the uh, new cpu so it's okay
I would have to do like a comparison on per opening the same file uh, with Photoshop and uh, and here and maybe comparing the, the speed of the brushes or some filters. But um, to be honest, I don't think it's any slow. So I don't think there's any reason to do it actually. Maybe if uh, I'm doing an animation here in Clip Studio and I have a lot of layers and a lot of uh, frames of animation that have to be really smooth and fast, I would have to kind of test it. But uh, the performance of the M1 Mac is so good already that I don't think it's a problem. What's my favorite movie in animation? Uh, I would have to say three or four of them. Um, it would be certainly something from Studio Ghibli. That's one. Uh, which one it changes with the moment? Right now I'd probably say um, uh, Mimi Osubaseba. So it's um, only yesterday, I think. No, not only yesterday. Uh, uh, the one with the violin maker and, and story writer uh, couple. Uh, I don't I don't remember how it's called in English. But also uh, we like very much the um, collection of short movies, which is called Memories. And I also like um, uh, Satoshi Kon's animations. I know that I'm cheating right now because I'm mentioning a lot of them. Um, and maybe the first uh, Ghost in the Shell movie? It's like fif 15 movies or something, but... <laughs> yes, uh, that's more or less. Oh, thank you! I didn't even know that you can u now use this function. <laughs> thank you very much! Yes, I tried to put the Photoshop brushes here because you can. Uh, the Whisper of the Heart, yes. Uh, I tried to put... Um, uh, okay, so the Whisper of the Heart is probably right now my favorite Ghibli movie. Uh, until now it was Ponyo, but I don't know. Lately I really kind of like the Whisper of the Heart. I, s I saw the... Uh, Cut Returns, uh, which is kind of a, like a spin-off thing, and um, I, I, it's just a uh, usual anime, it's nothing special, but I kind of liked it um, enough that I rewatched, because of it I rewatched the um, uh, Whisper of the Heart and I really really liked it. I don't know, I somehow, it somehow um, clicked right now with my um, uh, feelings or something just the right uh, amount of hope and just the right of the amount of um, kind of y youthful hope I guess um, I really liked it. It's a really positive movie, which even though is set um, in like, I think 90s or 80s, um, it's really positive and it and it manages to kind of um, avoid all these 80s, 90s cliches and um, it's really well made. I have watched Red Line. I actually saw it in the cinema and uh, after that I also saw it like two times I think it's really nice it's really good um, I liked it a lot actually <coughs> uh, what about <coughs> what about cartoons uh, recently I have seen the uh, wolf walkers on the uh, apple thing which was really nice, actually. And I like all uh, the other two movies from this studio also. So the, the same people did two other movies, which I don't know if you can, if you can count them as cartoons. 
I really like Over the Garden Wall and I really like Adventure Time. I like Rick and Morty, but uh, it has its up ups and downs, I guess. Again, I, I, I think uh, you can you can get away with a lot of nihilism, <laughs> but um, sometimes it's it's too much there. Okay, I will put a kind of bluish layer here, so I can make the building like kind of more in the background, but not so much. Uh, something like this. Okay, and I'll again group it to. So I don't have it outside the folder. Yes, that's the point of, of a lot of Studio Ghibli movies, that the world looks really rich and believable. Um, and this is also what I don't like about a lot of uh, other animations, that the back, not the backgrounds, but the world shown in them is really flat and two-dimensional and you can almost feel that okay so this was made uh, using some templates and uh, backgrounds that were painted like three backgrounds per day Soundtrack. Uh, I don't know if 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 uh, this is really hard question. <sighs> okay, so um, I don't know if 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 this represents my life or anything, but um, two of the albums that I uh, listened to a lot uh, recently and. Um, I usually don't feel like a strong emotional connection to music, not as much as I felt when I was a teenager. Uh, but recently I really, really liked uh, from New Things the uh, um, Anima album from Radiohead. Is it from Radiohead or from Tom York? Uh, I think Radiohead. Which was really, really good good especially connected with the um, video that was uh, made for it it's like an hour long uh, i think hour 40 minutes long almost a theatrical thing and um <laughs> Uh, and the second album that I listen a lot recently um, is like the greatest hits album from Eurythmics, <laughs> uh, which um, was actually um, kind of a soundtrack for my childhood because my parents had a tape of this. And this is such a great album, also uh, full of such a great, such great songs. Okay, and what shall we do next? I did this, I did this, so maybe let's do something with the truck. I need to paint the truck, so let's try to do this. It's, this is the layer of the truck and I have two clipping layers. Both of them are normal, so I can use them. Uh, this is why I sometimes um, decide to put um, things on the same layer even though they are from different parts of the picture because I can get away with using less layers. Okay. And... Uh, I'm just kind of continuing on this. Um, I have been working on this for already four or five days, I think, and I want to finish this. So um, I usually work 
if I have like a big picture like this, I usually work for nine, ten hours per day, maybe on a picture like this, if I feel like it. So today uh, you can um, uh, take part in three, four hours of this, four hours of this process. Usually a picture like this can take up to um, up to 30, 40 hours, I guess. But uh, because I'm doing this in a program that I was not used to, I had to make the like adjust the brushes and make the shortcuts work for me. I reprogrammed the small keyboard so I can use it um, because I'm used to it. Uh, so it took me a bit longer to kind of get into the groove and start actually working on the thing. Uh, yes, sometimes I paint on on few layers, not maybe not on one because this is uh, really limiting, especially if I have uh, a sketch. But um, yeah, I paint on uh, only few layers. Sometimes I think it's a nice exercise um, in planning. It's kind of similar to painting with gouache on paper, actually. I'm how old I am. Uh, ah, not me. Okay. <laughs> I didn't notice the at mark. Uh, I will be using Procreate because most of the times I uh, prefer to use my uh, uh, iPad to paint digitally because it just kind of feels natural. Uh, but I use Photoshop a lot for um, editing my scans, so editing my uh, uh, scanned pictures and uh, even if I paint something in Procreate, I uh, often do the final editing on it in Photoshop because I just can use more layers and it's kind of a bit faster, not so much, but... Uh, mostly it's it's the freedom of having as many layers as I can, even if the file is big and I can make copies of the files easily, copy paste stuff and stuff. So um, when I do the final edit, I mostly most of the times do it in on my computer. So for this I use Photoshop, but I really don't like having the monthly subscription from Adobe only for Photoshop's sake, uh, because I don't use it so much. So if I can uh, buy an application, like a professional drawing application that will be okay for me and for Kana and pay, pay once for it, um, that's great. and. Uh, from what I can see, the Clip Studio has better functionality in terms of drawing um, manga. So you can draw um, multi-paged uh, manga here. And also um, I can make animation because it has the timeline options and tra uh, light table options and some functionality for animators that uh, Photoshop doesn't have. So. I just want to confirm if I can confirm that it can do all the things that Photoshop can do for me and I don't lose anything. I don't actually see any reasons to stay with uh, Photoshop and keep using it. So, But um, for painting and actually doing stuff like I'm doing right now, um, I prefer the iPad uh, just because it feels more natural for me and um, my kind of hand-eye coordination and how how tense I have to be to do the line that I want to do um, is a lot less in uh, on the iPad especially for the line work for painting like this like a background uh, I think a tablet and a computer is also okay but um, uh, for doing lines for like characters and and line work for illustrations uh, so if i would uh, do like a comic or something i think procreate is uh, on the ipad or anything on the ipad like clip studio on the ipad also probably is uh, better uh, this is the ex version yes
but uh, I think the fun functionality that I'm using here to paint is uh, in the f uh, cheaper version also. From uh, I would prefer you to compare it like online on the like charts. Uh, but I think the main difference is that um, on the cheaper version you cannot do uh, like multi-page documents and uh, the animation is limited to like 12 frames or something like that. So if you just want to paint a picture, you can do it on the cheaper version too. Uh, I'm I'm really excited about the new iPads. Um, I was talking about in the previous stream today, but um, I hope that um, some painting applications on the uh, on the iPad will allow us to use the full capabilities of the new uh, iPad because um, I really hope that, for example, uh, Procreate will give up on the like layer amount limit for example so this is just kind of stupid uh, or, uh <laughs> at this point i mean the new ipad will have the same uh cpu that uh, i have right now here and i have like bucket load of layers and it's a huge file and it works okay so i don't really see the reason to have still like 20 layers limit or something on bigger files. So if if only these applications will allow us to use uh, the uh, new iPad to its full potential, I think it will like be a really great creative tool. I don't know actually why, but um, I somehow um, just had more um, examples probably of um, interesting places than <laughs> interesting people. I don't know. I, I, I kind of was interesting more in buildings and, and, and things more than in people when I was young. So naturally, when I drew things, I drew things rather than people. I tried to do some characters from like cartoons and uh, books and, and comics. But mostly I uh, ended up drawing um, castles and uh, furniture, for example, for some reason. I don't think there was anything kind of deep about it. I just felt um, how do you call it? Mm. When you take a sketchbook and you have a pen, uh, I guess there are types of people who do their favorite their favorite anime character uh, the best they can do. Uh, but I would um, look around and see a chair and I would be like, oh, this is a chair. So I would just sketch it in the sketchbook and um, I got kind of better at sketching things in my sketchbook uh, until I could draw a chair kind of accurately um, without looking at a chair. Uh, and I could do kind of mechanical things and show how they would move and so on. So. I was interested in mechanical things. I would. I was uh, interested in, in machines and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't went the way of a lot of boys who drew draw only cars and, and stuff. Uh, but um, I don't know. 
I kind of was in the middle. I tried some characters, but mostly I did like castles and 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 places and um, buildings from photos and and uh, buildings from uh, photos I found in books and so on. I don't know if uh, this is a trick question about I I Ilya, um, uh, because I met him actually in an event um, uh, at an event uh, organized by Adobe for uh, uh, and uh, Apple uh, in Tokyo. Uh, but uh, as an artist, I, I think that um, a lot of uh, artists have to kind of remember that what we create and what we post on the internet is seen by a lot of people. And we have influence, not in the way of influencers, but in the way of people making images of things that sometimes don't exist and making them exist and putting them online. And this is a kind of great power <laughs> to have uh, because we can show um, things that will make people think about better, deeper things and uh, we can show things that will make them think about not so much deeper things and I think that uh, this kind of a bit repetitive art that um, is popular uh, on the internet and gets uh, like retweeted easily uh, and so on uh, it's not always the best thing to make and to show. Uh, so it's the similar problem with uh, the kind of cutesy moe art, uh, which I was talking about on my um, blog. Uh, yes, this is popular and yes, this is kind of um, easy to um, share and so on, but um, in the end, it has its kind of motifs that I don't like. <laughs> and um, making a lot of similar things and just posting them because the, they are popular and feeling good about it is not a great thing either, I think. I think, yes, it will be available if uh, nothing explodes or stops suddenly, so it should be uh, online after. So, to answer your question, uh, I think Ilya and people like him um, are good at the thing that are they are doing. So, for example, at designing these uh, popular characters, which are easy to put in places and um, look nice. Uh, but for me the art is not only about looking nice but about giving a positive message which is more um, deeper a bit deeper I hope so um, I don't really support this kind of Instagram accounts that do this kind of thing. That's it. <laughs> we we actually had an art 
earthquake today. It's so big, but um, it shook us a little. Um, I think backgrounds are really important. Not because I, I drew backgrounds, uh, but because um, I think that um, they are the ultimate tool to world building. You can have the best, the simplest characters, uh, but still have interesting worlds uh, built from like interesting backgrounds. And if it comes to conveying the feelings of the character, conveying, conveying the um, atmosphere of the scene, uh, nothing is better than backgrounds that actually do what they're supposed to do. So um, play a big part in this weird trick of um, sending thoughts from my brain to your brain through pictures. And this is still something I'm trying to learn. <coughs> okay. Add a bit more detail here. Uh, our dog just um, probably killed the uh how do you call it um like a like a thing that like a toilet for dogs for small puppies which has like um sheets of thing that you replace she just killed it dead <laughs> supposed to be like thing here right it makes the ramp go up and down so let's paint something uh, I, I cannot tell you how I met Kana because pr maybe someday we will need it for a comic <laughs> can I show the dog So yeah, um, it has uh, teeth sharpened to atomic uh, values. Ah, just a minute. A minute. Uh-huh. She is kind of similar, right? Um, to the to the to the avatar. 
We actually had a similar dog when I was in Poland. We had a Welsh terrier, which is a bit similar to the to my avatar. Okay, so I have to extend this part a bit. Mm, extend. Like these characters here? Uh, no, I actually drew them, uh, but um, uh, kind of fixed them a bit. Mostly the, the, the main character that's in the front. Yeah, I um, I I like these kind of uh, this kind of type of dogs. Uh, we had a Welsh Terrier when I was in Poland. So naturally, when um, I was doing the story about Yokohama, so called in Yokohama, I uh, painted this type of character um, turned into like a human kind of thing. Um, so later, when um, I decided to use it as a as the avatar for my stuff, um, it it kind of be became the avatar for my things okay maybe the fence should be a bit darker so we can see it actually Is this the same layer? It's the same layer actually, okay. Maybe a bit darker. Hmm. I think I may be merged down something I shouldn't have. Can I get away with it with just copying this and pasting it? I think I can. Yay! Mm, it's okay-ish. So this part here. And I'll fix this fence here really quickly. Is this layer right? Okay. Okay. We always had dogs that were kind of middle-sized. <laughs> One we uh, got from uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, a, a pound, not a hou pa hound, pound, pound, hound. Like uh, the place that has unwanted uh, dogs. So we took one from there, and the other one we took from our family who could not uh, take care of it uh, anymore. Um, so we always like got dogs from somewhere. So um, this is actually the first dog that um, I have because we kind of looked for it and, and uh, got it. The foliage is the most important thing that you have to remember is um, 
the level of details changes, which is kind of obvious, uh, if you <laughs> kind of um, stop and think about it, uh, it's um, the level of details changes a lot with the distance. So, um, so when you have something that's far away and um, okay, let's put it here. So if you have something that's far away, you have to have more uh, less details, and if you have something that's uh, close, you have to have more details. And this is really important with foliage because of um, how just detailed it is. Uh, If you get good at deciding what uh, amount of detail is needed for a tree or something that's close or far away, you can um, get really good at doing the kind of uh, distance perspective thing in your picture. So for example, here I have uh, a plant that's kind of close to uh, is it wisteria, right? Uh, which is really close to us, so we can see all the leaves and everything. But here on, on the tree, in uh, like middle distance, you can only see like some leaves because they are highlighted. And uh, this tree here in the back, I will paint like really roughly, so uh, it doesn't have anything almost there. So I'll just take like a largish, largish brush and do it really rough uh, where's the brush? Where's it like this so it will be just like a shape and I might put some highlighted leaves on it but uh, not necessarily Uh, question about right places at the end have you had the feeling of losing sense of the quality of what you made because of the late uh, um, long making process um, I don't think so because um, what I did actually with right places is not something that you usually do with animation it's like I did one cut at a time almost all, all the cuts so um, in you usually in animation you um, uh, give the backgrounds to the background people and the animation to the animation people and they make it and then someone else puts it together and it's done but what I did was I did the animation and the layout and then the animation and the background for one cut I would put the one cut together and I would have like a five second cut that I made and it was done and I could look at it and say, oh, okay, so in this cut I did this right, this right, this was like, uh, but um, it works, um, so let's go to the other cut. So I did, um, because I did like one cut at a time, uh, I had like one picture at a time that I could like see and, uh, and um, be like content with it or not. Uh, so it was a bit uh, of a weird process when each cut was uh, done uh, separately and I was able to kind of actually see my uh, progress because I actually get got better on the way <laughs> uh, and some of the cuts were better than the, than the rest. Uh, I was still learning at that point a lot. So... Um, when I finished the whole animation, it was more like I was looking at a longer um, thing that I knew what I was doing uh, throughout the way. So, um, the whole thing was satisfactory enough. It was acceptable not unacceptable it was acceptable but i knew that uh if i did it again i i could do uh, a lot of these things differently but you know it's always with with a bigger pro project it's always like this
it's really rare for me even on smaller pictures uh, that I can just um, finish it and be like oh this went perfectly I mean like oh. I'm 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 the god of all uh, watercolors and uh, my name is Caput Mortum or something um, I feel more stoicism about it so I, I, I feel more stoi stoic about what I do um, I see the minus sides and, and things that went good uh, and things that well went okay um, and it was the same with, with the animation it, it, it served its purpose, its purpose so that was the most impor important part it, it got me um, uh, it got me the job that I wanted and uh, it got me uh, out of my university as a final kind of assignment so that was that was that and I learned a lot throughout the process uh, I always try to um, do works that uh, have this kind of multiple purpose and uh, in case of this animation it's also always w it also worked so okay let's add some small details maybe with like brighter green like this kind of here on the top maybe and see how it looks ah uh, i know the i know the feeling <laughs> Okay, so so just this kind of amount of details is is enough for this. Uh, if I put more, uh, it will look like it's closer. So that's not good. Um, I can actually select it maybe copy it paste it uh, flip it maybe flip and I can put it here rotate it a bit a bit so it's not so obvious uh -huh. I'll lock it make it a bit darker And I'll put it behind the gate. Somewhere, and oh, this is the gate. Okay. So, <laughs> we have a bit of a background also here done. Yay! Uh painting without the line art is more about the shadow and the shape itself so if you feel comfortable with um, painting with shapes more than lines um, it's actually easier probably for you um, than doing uh, lines I'm a line person mostly but um, so even if I uh, end up doing a picture like this, which is mostly done with shapes and colors, I first do the lines because I can uh, kind of decide what goes where and the shape of things better when um, I have the the line. Uh, sure. So, like this. 
Like this. So for example, when you paint a shadow like this, you have to be aware of the shape of things and how they are in kind of 3D in your head to um, be able to project how the shadow goes and where it goes. So it's important to be able to imagine the shape of things in a quite simple 3D sometimes in your head so you know uh, where the shadow is and where the highlights are and so on. And when you paint only with a uh, shape with no lines, it's even more important to be able to do it without um, the lines. So instead of drawing a chair, um, you should be able to um, ideally, of course, uh, paint it only with the shadow instead of doing like the outlines and then coloring it in and then imagining when the, where the shadow is. I, I don't think it's muscle memory actually uh, because I have to actually um, consciously uh, stop myself from doing uh, things automatically because I if I just do things automatically um, they end up stiff and and n not uh, looking as I would like them to look so I have to consciously um, make all the pictures that I do uh, all the things in the pictures wait where is the car where is the car where's the car I'm getting to a level when I'm kind of confused with the layers mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay so it's this thing here and these details also okay i will later move the car a bit lower because it's too high okay let's add some details here okay I'll turn my photo reference of the tiger thing. I'll just show it to you for a second. It's here. I don't want to make it too detailed. So um, it's already detailed enough, I think. I just want to make it a bit smoother. If I can. Because this is supposed to be like... Um, what do you call it? Um, pottery thing, so thing made of a uh, thing made of clay and baked, like a figure. So I want to make it a bit smoother in color, so it seems like it's smooth. Um, A uh, few things that can help you with this is keeping eye on the histogram, so um, the the graph that shows you the, the light and uh, dark parts uh, on your picture. Um, other is like when you choose a color, not to go too far or too far here, just keeping like in the middle, like this here ish. Um, so you don't get over contrasted colors um, also you can um, make a black and white sketch first uh, which will allow you to kind of de get the hang of the scene and when the darkest where the darkest parts and the lightest parts and so on has to has have to go um, 
generally um, you can also study this by um, using work of other people and picking colors from there like using someone else's work as a kind of a color palette so you limit yourself to pick colors only from this picture or that photo or something uh, and this will allow you to get the hang of these uh, choices a bit in a natural way because if you like this uh, for example picture you would also uh, like uh, a, uh, another picture that's colored in the same kind of color scheme so you use it as a, as a color palette But um, yeah, the color picker, especially the one in, in Photoshop, which has the HSB uh, sliders I is a really nice tool because it kind of shows you where you are on the on the on the contrast. So if you are using a lot of contrast, uh, like too bright or too saturated colors, it's really easy to tell because you can see that, oh, you are too far here or too far there. Uh, you can control it a bit. You can kind of tell yourself, okay, I'll be painting. I will be painting only with colors that are kind of right here, or I'll be painting only with colors that are right here. And you can move this around, so you can choose any color you want, but then you can um, only pick colors like from the middle or something. So um, it's interesting to do these kind of e exercises to check what will happen if I use only colors from this part of the color wheel or this part of the color wheel, or I will use this picture uh as a palette for my pic my uh, own work or something which is uh, which is a really um interesting exercise and teaches you a lot i guess ah i don't have a favorite drawing um i don't know actually um I'm to be honest I'm not a person that is kind of moved by uh, a single um, drawing or a painting so I don't have uh, a painting that I love the most because I don't kind of love any painting that um, uh, this is difficult I don't I don't know actually What's your favorite painting or drawing? Um, this is really weird because I, I, I paint and draw and uh, stuff, but um, I'm not one of these people that can go to um, a, uh, an art gallery, for example, and be like moved by a picture. Rarely it happens. Um, I'm more easily moved by stories, by um, an animation or a movie, or um, even a song, I guess, uh, than a, a picture. I can be in awe for the technical side of a well done, I don't know, watercolor or something, but um, I, I don't feel like this kind of emotional re response to pictures so much. Okay. That's why probably in um, the things that I do and in the pictures that I like, actually, I pay more attention to the story within than just like a, a emotional load, I guess. Hmm, this is kind of okay, I guess. I don't want to add too much details but I want to do like these blicks of light that uh, suggest that this is like a smooth thing
suddenly, it suddenly becomes kind of shiny. Yeah? Um, so I met this tiger on one of my walks around Tokyo. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's sitting on a toilet and has a piece of paper in his mouth, in its mouth. Um, uh, but I wanted to, to paint it for some time and I thought, okay, so, um, if you have a tiger like this, where the tiger should be? And I thought, okay. Uh, there is a place in Tokyo that's called Toranomon, so the Tiger's Gate. But it, it I think there was actually a gate there. <coughs> and the Tiger was just the name of the direction. Like, I think North, South and so on has like uh, animals in uh, in Japan. There's a Tiger and, and I think a snake and so on. Uh, so instead of saying the North Gate or the West Gate, they would see the Tiger Gate or the Snake Gate or something. But there's no actually actual gate right now in Tokyo that has a tiger in it. So I wanted to kind of imagine and paint this a bit strange place where you have a tiger gate and everyone is crazy about tigers there. So they have tigers in a shop window and they have selling tigers and the shop is named Tiger and, and so on. So um, I imagined this place and started to paint it. So you have the tiger in the display window and you have also the gate with the tiger kind of lantern thing. Uh, and I will also later uh, ask Hana to write me some tiger uh, brush store and so on uh, letters so I can put them there. Uh, so this is a, a bit of a variation on the tiger thing, tiger gate place which does not exist okay I'm sorry but my battery in my camera is going down and we already are uh, one hour in so um, I'll be stopping at this today uh, I don't know if I'll make another one of this. I'll just or just edit the video uh, till the end. Uh, but um, yeah, I think it's already kind of late here, so uh, I'll stop for today. I'll just turn on all the layers so you can see how it looks right now. Uh, this shadow here, and that's it, I think. Okay, so right now. We added some details to the tiger and we I painted the uh, the moving track. I'll just move it uh, a bit l lower later. And that's it for today, I guess. Uh, okay, thank you for joining me on this um, a bit second half of the stream today. Um, I guess um, I'll continue this uh, picture for the next few days. Uh, this is a commissioned piece um, that I'm doing, which it was commissioned by actually the Clip Studio uh, company, the company that makes Clip Studio. And they asked me to draw a picture that they can later use in their promotional materials and to make a video about me using the Clip Studio application. And I can say whatever I want in this video. Uh, and I can draw uh, whatever I want in my picture. So I'm working on this right now. Okay. Thank you for the stream and I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you in the uh, next live stream. Thank you for joining me today. Have a good night, evening, morning, whatever you have right now. <laughs> Thank you and see you later.